Hello everyone, happy Tuesday in a month sa inyong lahat and thank you for tuning in to Creative Nonfiction. My name is Tutor Kit and I am here with, actually I'm going to miss Tutor Jerry. <laughs> Tutor Jerry, please come back soon and hello sa inyong lahat mga dear learners. Siguro babati muna tayo no? para exciting naman yung ating hapon. No? So hello kay Vanessa. Hello, Steph Liwag, Lorenzo Ladi Domingo. I think the very first uh, student who came here was a Keith R.G. Hi, Joy Martin Ruiz, Jezza Bernadas, Joy, I see Liam Besa, Lynn Aliaga Likufa. So, guys, make sure na uh, help us na dumami tayo ngayong hapon na ito, no? So, send the link to this session. To your GCs, to your friends, your classmates, even your pets, no? Let them watch our creative nonfiction and let's have fun together. Hi pala kay Hazel Gatan Mateo, kay Mark Pasqua, and Christina Grace Zipagad Corpus. Also see Mace, Jacqueline Corpus. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for tuning in to Creative Nonfiction. And shout out muna tayo. Ayan. Okay. So may kung may gusto kayong shout out dyan, just let me know. Uh, just put down uh, your shout outs in the comment section and I'll read them for you. Hello pala kay Ma'am Grace de la Cruz Gutierrez, who is my master teacher sa Chris Troy High School. And also hello sa lahat ng teachers and students sa Chris Troy High School under Schools Division of Tarlac Province. Nice. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. So, we're now on our seventh episode, actually, our seventh session for creative nonfiction here at Itulai. In the past six weeks, we learned how to, you know, deal with the elements of nonfiction and kind of like piece them together to form uh, poignant and inspiring stories from our lives, no? And today, we will be focusing on drafting our short piece of nonfiction. So, para ito na yung combination ng lahat na napag-aralan natin from day one to day six. So, we kind of learned the techniques and the different themes in writing nonfiction. And today is the day that we will learn how to piece them together. Okay, so uh, join us today and make sure na ishare nyo ito sa inyong friends. Padamihin pa natin ito, no? We have 23 uh, viewers so far. Okay. Hi, Jezani. Hi, Rose Ann. Quinones. Uh, Christian as, as, as well. And also, uh, Joseph Conrad Bulaklak. Thank you for always watching Creative Nonfiction. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, last week, we had this challenge. So, we challenge you to pick either a second-person POV or third-person POV to create what we call a travelogue or an observer literary journalism piece, you no? Know, to describe your local palenque, carinderia, or plaza. Honestly, guys, when I, when, I, I know, when I walk through our palenque, I would be bombarded by sounds, the different smells, different sights, colors, and all those kinds of like, uh, uh, what do you call this? All those kinds of things that stimulate the senses, no? And so that's why I ask you guys to take a walk through your palenque, your carinderia, or plaza, and help us experience this place based on your perspective. Okay, so let's, let's see who are our duties of the week and of course hindi hindi nawawala no si Neslin and si Keith RG and also Christina and also congratulations to our newcomer Saturday of the week who is Hazel M Gatan thank you guys for uh, writing so well and submitting uh, sharing a piece of your experience to all of us today so Right now, let's go ahead and look at those uh, pieces of nonfiction that they wrote. So this is a Nestlin's piece. She walked through uh, the small palenque. In 
was my favorite. So she said, oh, she wrote, numerous slippers roamed around the small palenque in town, leading to their own destinations while leaving a dirt of footprints on the ground. I love the synecdoche here. Like slippers represent people, but it's if a kind of playful way of saying that there are many people. Great job, uh, Nestlin. And also, I love the tomato colored faces. <laughs> this is a really, this is a really great uh, kind of metaphorical way of saying that it's hot and everybody is sweaty, something like that. So great job, great job there, Nestlin. And this was, this is now from Keith. RGC Nunas. Uh, this is her experience in a restaurant. So let me read a little bit of this. The restaurant was part of a house. In the terrace, shelves taken most of the walls and stack of books were aligned from astronomy to history, mathematics, and English literature. Mahaba actually ito, guys. But uh, for the per for for uh, time constraints, no. Uh, this is the, the part that I really liked the most, you know? Uh, she didn't only just like describe uh, what, what she saw in the restaurant. She also uh, was able to enumerate the different details, you know, in a very interesting fashion. Well done. Next, we have Hazel M. Gatan. So this is like a simple or a sample travelogue from, from her. So I really love her hook here. She said, are you worried because your refrigerator has run out of food and you don't know what to do because you have visitors coming? Oh, I had the same experience like long before. And so and then she featured the San Mariano public market, which then she described in great detail. Great job, Hazel. Very well written. And then lastly, we have Christina. Zipagan and Christina described a carinderia. No, it's Aling Sosings. Carinderia is kind of saucy, you know. It's, it's a local Filipino food restaurant located in Makati, a city within Metro Manila. She described the atmosphere of the carinderia and how the food were presented. And it, she made it sound so delicious and so mouth watering. Great job. Even the, the, uh, enumeration of the Indiana tilapia, grilled tilapia, Indiana na liempo, all those kinds of details. Great job for doing that, Christina. All right, we appreciate you guys. And hopefully, uh, our other learners will be able to submit their own uh, entries too for our challenge. Then, then you guys know, si Sir Jerry na mimigay siya ng GCash. So, mga mapapalat na mapipili. So, congratulations once again to to Hazel, Christina, to Keith RG, and uh, oh, and of course, Nestlin. No, congratulations, guys. Thank you for being such great examples. All right, of excellence to all of our viewers today. Okay, put that you guys. Uh, flash review. For a flash review, this is a little quiz about the different points of view we learned last week. Okay, we learned three. We have the first person, the second person, and the third person. So write FB if the description describes the first person. Write SP if it describes the second person, and TP for third person. Okay, let's do this. Ready na kayo? Okay, let's begin. Number one, tells the story in the perspective of the narrator. Ayan, what kind of point of view is this? If you're telling the story in the perspective of the narrator. For example, ako, I will tell my own story. Ano kaya ang point of view ang gagamitin ko? What do you guys think? Hmm. Second person kaya, you kaya, no? Third person kaya, he, she kaya, no? What do you guys think? Okay. Hello pala kay Angelica Wenceslao and also kay Romnik Piano, uh, two of our uh, avid viewers. 
Also, kay Luis Del Domelo Soriano. At kay Katrina Magusip. Ayan. Neslin said, FP, first person daw. Okay. Who else has an answer? Hello, Sarah Jane Makabangun Galut. Ayan. Also, hello kay April Joy Salaginto Villancho. Okay, let's, let's reveal the answer now. And the answer is FB. Correct. First person. Correct to then, Keith R.D. Thank you. Good job, Hazel, as well. Nice. And Rajan Reyes. Good job. Nice. Good job, thank you, Joseph. Okay. Let's now move on to number two. Number two. This is used mostly in travelogues. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, apparently, uh, in number three, when the narrator serves as an observer of a scene, this is a third person. It's like you're a reporter, and what you see, you just narrate. No, you don't have any kind of personal like opinions about the story. You're just reporting it as it is, and that is the third person point of view nice okay guys today we will be discussing about drafting a short piece of nonfiction. okay so once again this is like the culmination of everything we've learned from the last six weeks and then next week we will have our review week again so yeah, let's let's do this our objective for today is to integrate themes, lead, and conclusion in drafting an effective nonfiction piece. Okay, so we will learn how to use themes, how to create a compelling and catchy lead or hook, and also uh, we will learn how to end or finish strong. We will learn how to write. A conclusion okay all right so first we need to know or understand what a draft is okay ano bang draft no a draft according dito is an imperfect and rough beginning of a writing process no so ibig sabihin hindi pa talaga siya dapat perfect i mean kung first time mo magsulat ng isang kwento and expect mo na ba na perfect sa kagad? No. Do you guys know that the best writers actually go through several drafts, maybe 10 or 15? Sometimes their very first drafts were like rejected by editors, no? And then they, they write and write more drafts until they get to a point wherein it's good enough for publication, no? So, ibig sabihin, kung mag kung gagawa ka ng isang non-fiction piece, no, isang isang draft, you don't have to be perfect. That's why it is called rough draft. Kasi, hindi siya smooth. <laughs> Ayan. And also, a draft is your first attempt to write something. So, it's, it's really not meant to be, like, really good at the beginning. No? Ayan. So, your draft will undergo many revisions until you produce a final draft. So remember, guys, when you say revision, this is the process of correcting correcting your draft. So, for example, I wrote, like my first draft, no, it's very crappy still. It's still not that good enough, but it's okay, right? We, it's, it's okay to be imperfect. And then my draft will undergo revisions. I will look at it, correct some stuff, uh, make some changes about the plot, about the storyline, something like that. No, some details, add some more details to it. That's the process of revision. If you uh, go through your, your draft many times to correct, to add, to improve it until you produce what we call a final draft. And the final draft, guys, you know, it has a bit more. Okay, teacher, more. Ayan. Okay. So, according to uh, the the idiots, the complete idiots guide no, to writing nonfiction, there are two kinds of drafts. Sabi nila. And let me know, guys, kung ano yung ano. 
ano yung draft ninyo usually pinagsusulat kayo? The first one is the glamorous version. Kapag glamorous version daw, ideas flow fully, freely to you. Para bang lahat na lang madali yung ang bilis mo magsulat, tapos yung mga ideas, mga, yung creativity mo, nagpo-flow lang, parang wala kang hinto, tapos boom, tapos na. Ayun, no? Glamorous ba kayo magsulat ng, gra- ng draft? Or, meron yung tinatawag naman na tortured version. <laughs> When you say tortured version, ito naman yung hirap na hirap ka sa pag-iisip ng, ng, ano, ng ideas, na ng creativity. So parang uh, nakaranas na ba kayo ng you are looking at a blank Microsoft Word document and then hindi mo alam kung ano yung isulat mo at the beginning. And then you're just you're just staring there for like staring at the screen for like five minutes and then you're doing nothing. So guys, share in the comment section no. Ano yung usually na version ninyo ng pagda-draft? Is it glamorous? Is it easy, free flowing? Or is it mostly tortured? Hirap at medyo hindi ba ka isip ng ideas? Share, please make sure to share, no? Your your kind of draft uh, sa ating comment section. Let me share share my my uh, my, my process kind of. Usually, para siyang ano? Uh, para siyang peaks and valleys, meaning sometimes there are like glamorous parts wherein ideas flow freely, but most of the time it's tortured. <laughs> Ang hirap. Sabi ni Joseph Condal Bulaklak, I kind of tortured po. <laughs> That's okay. Actually, uh, the best writers, no, you uh, usually they're in their version of drafting is tortured as well, no. But when when it happens to you guys, when you encounter what we call writer's block, it actually helps to stand up and walk around, no, and then maybe do something else, and then when you're feeling refreshed or well rested, you can come back and ideas usually come when you're not thinking about them no you can take a walk you can take a bike talk to your friends something like that no what about you guys uh ano yung process niyo sa pag the draft is it glamorous or tortured sabi ni Sarah Jane Makabangon go tara ba to uh i think tortured niyo sa yo uh Sarah Jane no well that's okay it means you're human no nice okay guys okay now When you're thinking of writing a draft, no, because hindi pa ito yung final na essay mo, think of it as like an iceberg. No. An iceberg usually it has its tip visible, no, to boaters, to people. You lang nakikita yung taas lang. But apparently, underneath that tip is like a bigger, uh, a bigger, the biggest. Because the bigger form of the iceberg. No, so that's why we have this idiomatic expression, the tip of the iceberg. No, because we don't really see the full picture yet. We only see uh, the the like the visible part, you know, the little little part. Sabi ni Hazel, tortured version po. Wala po pa ako na sa surat na to torture na po yung utak ko. That's <laughs> like I, I feel you, Hazel. Iniisip ko pala na may assignment at torture na rin ako. <laughs> But that's okay. That's okay. So, parang ganito na lang kayo mag-isip, guys, no? Isipin nyo, na yung draft is the tip of the iceberg, no? Parang overview lang siya. Hindi pa ito yung buong version ng inyong story. That's why it's it's rough, no? Katiting lang siya. But you need that draft, no? Yung katiting na yan... To write the entire story or the rest of your essay or your nonfiction piece, no. So, in writing your draft, you are actually slowly revealing or unveiling the rest of your story, or in this case, the iceberg, no. Hi, Naira G. Dagman, welcome. Yeah. So, sabi nga na American novelist si Anne Lamott, or uh, who is a really good uh, novelist she said the child's draft where you let it all pour out 
and then let it romp all over the place, knowing that no one is going to see it, see it and that you can shape it later. That's the good thing about drafts, guys, is that hindi siya kapakita sa iba, actually, agad, no? Sa inyo muna yun. So you can, you can play with it like a child. You can let, let it, like, romp around, kahit all, all over the place siya. It's okay. Actually, part of, like, writing a draft is brainstorming ideas, free writing, like just doodles and scribbles, writing whatever comes into your head. I mean, if you're writing a short nonfiction piece about something that happened in your life, you can just write down all of the things that you remember, you know? Sabi ni Keith RG, it depends upon the topic. Po. If I know something about a topic that I am writing, then I know what to write, but mostly torture drafting po talaga. Ah, I totally get you, Keith, you know? Uh, that's why try to try to select a, a topic or a story that you really know or you're really interested about. That's so that you can you can talk about it really well. No, mas marami ka masasabi. Ayan. Kesa naman hindi mo masadong alam no, hindi mo hindi mo gusto. So uh, usually as as teachers no, we need to give options or give some kind of freedom to the topics that we give our students. No, and so that. Mapipili nila kung ano yung gusto talaga nila. Ayan. Now, here are some things you need to remember when writing a draft. Don't be afraid of mistakes. Actually, expect that ang mistakes sa the draft. Don't be afraid of ideas no matter how silly they are. And don't be afraid of risks. So, just go with it, no? Don't, don't, don't be scared. Ayan. Sabi nga nila, no? All writers know that writing is a rewriting process. There is no perfect draft in the first draft. No, walang ganun. Walang ganun. Kaya wala rin perfecto. So, here are the three steps of drafting. No? First is find a theme, hook with a lead, then finish with a crazy awesome conclusion. So, ulitin natin, no? Find a theme, hook with a lead, and finish with a crazy awesome conclusion. Ayan. So, let's go first with finding a theme. Hi pala kay Jomel Padilla and Janine Mika Ganaban Siatriz. And kay Mark Chris and Esteban then. Ayan. Yan. Ano ba yung theme, guys? No? Uh, ano ba to? Basketball theme ba to? Volleyball theme? No? <laughs> okay. Now, we have discussed this before uh, about theme. Theme actually answers uh, these questions. You no, know? what is your story about? Anyways, what are you as an author trying to say? Ano gusto mo sabihin? Ano mensahe ang gusto mo makarating sa iyo ano sa yung manonood or sa yung ano our readers? No, if you can answer these two questions, then you have your theme. Okay, so. Sabi dito, theme is the central topic or unifying concept of a piece. It answers the questions, what's this about? So think about this. If you are sharing a story, tungkol saan ito? Ano ang mensahe nito? Ano yung topic dito? No? If you answer that, then you have a theme. And it should unite the rest of your uh, essay or your story. Uh, here's an example for me, for you guys. Uh, I have this experience wherein we went to uh, we went to Gabaldon with my family, and it was it was kind of rainy, you no. Know? So we we went and explored to find the waterfalls. But then at, at the end, parang then minakita kami nag landslide naganyan kakatawas lang mag landslide. We figure we had to go back, you no. Know? And here's another one. This is uh, visiting the beach after three years no of the pandemic now why did i choose these experiences these pictures well the first one is that the message that i wanted to convey in telling this story is that a little dose of fear will keep you safe that fear is actually not all that bad no it keeps you uh worried it keeps you 
focused. You know, it keeps you watchful, something like that. And then, yung beach naman after three years is that, for me, it marks the beginning of the end of the pandemic for me. Kasi noon, di ba, noong pandemic guys, sa bahay lang talaga tayo. We cannot uh, go out at all. No? And that was really, what do you call this? That was really uh, kind of like depressing for me because I love the beach. No? Ayan. So for me, when I visited the beach once again, if I tell a story about this experience, it's because I wanted to convey the message that visiting the beach is like a symbol of the end of our seclusion. No? Oh, natapos na yung pandemic. Okay. Ito pala ang tip, guys, kung nahihirapan kayong mamili ng story para sa inyong, ano, para sa inyong uh, personal essay or uh, non-fiction piece or sa vignette ninyo. Punta kayo sa, ano, sa inyong Facebook. Tapos, tinan nyo yung mga nakaraan yung post. Yung mga pictures ninyo. Most likely, may magandang kwento doon. No? Siguro gumala kayo ng mga kaibigan ninyo. You did this, you did that. You can actually look for topics in your Facebook. Tinan nyo yung mga pictures ninyo or your camera roll. You can look at that and and maybe base your story on one of the pictures there. Okay. Guys, kung kayo ang magusulat ng inyong, ano, ng inyong uh, story or non-fiction story, ano tungkol saan ang isulat ninyo? Paki-comment nga, guys, sa, ano, sa, sa comment section. If you are to write your non-fiction story right now, what will it be about? Anong experience ang isusulat ninyo? Sige nga, gusto ko makita, mabasahin ko habang, uh, as we go on. Okay. All right. The next part of, of drafting is that we need to hook with a lead, no? Uh, this is actually one of the most important parts, no? Of drafting, no? Thinking about how to begin. The lead is the beginning of your personal essay or your non-fiction piece. Uh, actually, guys, if you have a really good beginning or lead, it will hook your readers in reading the rest of your essay. Ayun yung gusto mo talaga iplano in your draft. Paano ko mahuhook yung mga readers ko na kung saan pag nabasa nila yung first part of my, my, my story, they will read the rest, no? Uh, sabi ni Joseph Konobulaklak, I'm gonna write about my online classes. If you have something profound, Joseph, no, that you can write about your online classes, what about the others, guys? Ano yung mga themes na gusto nyo isulat, no, my experiences, na kukuha nyo na theme? Make sure you write down in the comment section, okay, as we discuss. All right. So, in hooking with the lead, guys, you need to kind of remember these things. First, you must capture the reader's attention. No? You need to convince the readers to keep reading. No? Something like that. And it should encapsulate the essence of your piece. It should set the tone for the rest of your piece. No? And once they read your hook, they will be engrossed in reading the rest of your essay. Okay. So, here are a few uh, suggestions from the Complete Egypt's Guide to Writing Nonfiction by Christina Bofis. So, you can hook with an arresting fact or statistic. You could also hook with an intriguing quotation or maybe... A bit of dialogue, no? So, usapan agad. Something, for example, nagsigawan sila. Crispin Basilio. I mean, uh, there are real people named Crispin and Basilio, right? So, that could be a really good hook, no? Something that is intense. Something funny or humorous. A story or an anecdote, no? And a provocative question. So, these hooks are ideas that you can use in your own stories, no? 
and I will give you guys some samples here with the leads that we that I wrote and also so uh, what other people wrote. So this is a lead from one of my stories in Quiet Rage. No, pasensya na kayo. Ayan. So, so, ayan. So let me read this for you guys and make sure you read along with me, okay? I bashed its brown head against the concrete with a dull crack. Some of its guts flew and made small splatters on the ashy pavement which quickly evaporated under the 1 p.m. sun. Translucent buko juice trickled on my hand to my elbows. Did you guys notice how I opened up with something shocking? It, it kind of felt like I bashed a person's head against the concrete, but actually it was just a, a, a coconut fruit, a piece of coconut fruit. But it's actually effective because it kind of makes you think now, oh, back it. Bakit, bakit binash na yung head nito against the concrete? So it's, it's kind of like a little bit of risque and a little violent, no? But actually, it's not. So it's kind of like deception here. But it gives you some kind of like punch at the beginning that will make you intrigued. At, at least, I hope you're intrigued, right? Here's another from Christina Bofis herself. 24 women. <sighs> Notice her description here. 24 women are waiting when I enter the classroom in their bright orange sweatshirts and sweatpants. My students look like fluorescent ice pops. They are all bigger and taller than I am at 5'2 and 105 pounds. So just look at this, guys. 24 women in a classroom. They're uh, bright orange sweatshirts. They look like fluorescent ice pops great description great use of detail uh a really good simile no not hindi siya cliche uh here's here's more sabinya i feel vulnerable but i try to stride in confidently it would be a mistake to show fear on my first day teaching at the san francisco jail so once again no para may, may reveal dito she's actually a teacher in san francisco county jail you know so we didn't know that until we read uh towards the end of the lead you no know? so very effective use of details nice uh, this one is from from aunt ellie one of my uh my memoirs so according to this aunt ellie loved dusters those oversized dresses with floral prints and lacy necklines she looked plain in dusters, I would tell her. She would smile and agree. Carlos loved it when I wear them, she would say as she traced the wavy patterns with her fingers. So I, I use some uh, uh, some dialogue here and uh, what I call this thorough description because I want you to get a feel of my Aunt Ellie. I, I used wood to signal that this is actually habitual. This is what we do uh, this is what we do in a routinary fashion. This is my childhood that we do with, with Aunt Ellie. So, her face, despite the wrinkles that webbed and crept on her forehead and the weight under her eyes, remained radiant. She'd wear those dusters every day, everywhere. To the farmer's market on Mondays, to the village clinic for her blood pressure check every Wednesday afternoon. So, do you guys notice how how we set the tone here for something that is laid back in terms of storytelling, right? Laid back, routinary, something like that. Okay. Guys, puso naman nga kayo dyan kung andyan pa kayo. Pwede ba pa puso? <laughs> or any kind of reaction pa like dyan? Ano na naramdaman nyo ngayon? Are you, are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you shocked right now? Ano naramdaman nyo ngayon? Can you guys tell me using any of the emojis in the chat, please? Ayan, para magising-gising naman tayo. Okay. Wow. <laughs> we now go to the last part, which is to finish strong. This now talking about the conclusion. Remember, if you start strong, oh, umulan ng mga puso, maraming salamat, Joseph Calder, Bulaklak, and everyone. 
who uh, na nagpusa salamat guys I appreciate you truly okay so in writing a conclusion you need to start strong and finish strong so it's kind of like you write your conclusion in a way that will leave your readers wanting to come back for more gusto pa nang basahin ulit no or they want to uh, to read more about you about your experiences you finish describe how her dusters look and kind of gives this nice symmetry of the beginning and the end yes you can end also with a memorable coat you no know? or it could be something that you realize you no know? or your reflection about what this experience has meant to you you can offer a new insight what did you learn from the experience what new things did you just discover about yourself about other people or If you're feeling uh, pretty funny, you can surprise a reader with humor. You can end with something f- humorous or maybe a joke or something emotional that could pack like an emotional punch to your uh, story. Okay. So I'll probably just read to you guys. All right. So in my, in Aunt Ellie, this is how it ended. So I said, Uh, I ended with a little bit of like uh, tenseness and conflict here. I said, Aunt Ellie went home that night, her face dim. She did not speak at all. She looked as frail as ever. And as she climbed into her bed that groaned and squeaked that night, I held my breath. The smell of pineapple slucked in the air, the, ch- the silence choking the air around me. So uh, I, I would love, to, I, I like to kind of like make my readers hold their breath with me as well so with these descriptions and then i whispered can you tell me one more time how you and carlos met silence so it's kind of like a little bit of holding her breath i heard her sigh after what felt like an hour of sickening silence and then okay and then she said That night, Aunt Ellie told me for the thousandth time their adventure, stealing sugar cane from the back of the trucks, and blah, blah, blah. And this is the resolution that we're looking for after holding our breath for so long. We can now uh, breathe, e- breathe easy because it went well in the end. All right. So that was my example, guys. All right. Okay. So. Remember this when you will be writing your your draft. Oh, Sabine and Neslin, I'm going to write about something personal, specifically a core memory with my family. That's really good, Neslin. And I hope you uh, you think about something that is 